Are video games boring for you? Are you staring at your Steam library with over 100 plus games and yet you can't choose one to play? I do that all the time. And when I finally decide to play a game that might give me that dopamine rush, it's an old title that came out years ago. After finishing the previous video on consoles, I was reminded of all those great old titles and how excited I was while playing them for the first time. And that had me thinking, what modern titles am I excited to play? And I can only think of a handful, and those were just further installments of the previous titles like Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok. So in today's video, I plan to see why and how games became boring. Are our expectations too high? Are games objectively bad? Or did we simply just grow up? Well. Let's take a look if our expectations are too high. I think Cyberpunk would be the perfect example of this, even though I'm starting to feel bad for mentioning it in like every video. That game promised way, way too much, and thus it set players' expectations sky high, similar to what No Man's Sky did back in the day. On top of that, having Keanu Reeves promote the game, and even be a part of the game, made the hype even bigger. Welcome. So what happens when you have millions of fans eager to play your game as soon as possible? Well, cyberpunk happens. The game wasn't finished yet, but the hype was too much not to act on it. The game was teased all the way back in 2012, and players didn't want to wait anymore. The choice was this, release the game unfinished and cash out on the hype, or delay the game even further and risk losing fans' interest. We all know how this turned out. The game was a joke on release and became one of the biggest internet memes for a couple of months. So yes, you could say our expectations were too high, but rightfully so, since they set them high. So even though in some cases the expectations are high, I think it's safe to say that that isn't the problem here. I don't think players have high expectation, rather that they have standards. Games are expected to at least deliver what they promised, and to be playable. So if they aren't doing that, are they objectively bad? Well, yes and no. Let me explain. There are games that came out with bad reviews and were generally lacking, leaving a lot to be desired. Again, allow me to reference No Man's Sky. The game wasn't received very well on release, to put it lightly. People were upset that the devs didn't deliver on what they promised, and the state of the game as is was pretty repetitive and boring. However, the game got a second win couple of years down the line, delivering most of what they promised with updates. What I'm trying to say with all this is, not all games that are bad on release will stay bad forever. As long as the studios behind them are passionate, the game will pick itself back up. I don't think it's far-fetched to say that certain game studios became lazy over the years, I'm looking at you Blizzard, making a new game that is worse and or just a reskin of the previous game. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Overwatch 2 was the most unnecessary release like ever, COD Vanguard was a disaster all around, having 1.3k daily players and many other games that were just made bad. It's such a blatant, soulless money printer and they aren't even trying to hide it. But it's not all bad. There are still companies that care about their player bases and respect them. Good games that come to my mind would be Elden Ring, God of War, Resident Evil Village and many more. So yes, some companies that were respected and held in high regard for their attention to detail and quality have gotten lazy. But there are still many others that are just as passionate as they were, if not more. Now, the last point of growing up got me stuck. I did grow up, we did grow up, but I still play games and still enjoy playing them. I don't think I grew out of games, maybe I just see things different now that I have before. As a kid everything is new and exciting so you can play a bad game for god knows how long before getting bored. 
but the more you play good games, the more you get used to that level of quality. Maybe that's what's happening. Well, in conclusion, I think it's all of the above. In the last few years, a majority of game studios released cheap and boring games with the motive to earn, not to provide users with quality. I mean, check this price tag. That's insane. And the deluxe edition is even crazier, considering you're getting an RGB coat and like a bracelet or something. Bruh. It's just terrible, man. I've seen better quality reskins in Gmod and custom COD 4 lobbies. So with all that in mind, it's not really a surprise to see indie games start to boom. We've seen a lot of good indie games in the last couple of years like Outer Wilds, Little Nightmares, Omori, Stray and many others. So now that we know why games became boring, how do we change that? Well, sadly, we can't do much other than not buying the bad games that come out. I just woke up in a fucking steaming mood, yeah? Cause I live in a shithole! Do you know what I mean? First spoken. It's a fucking shithole! I hate the fucking place! I fucking hate it! It's full of dickheads! I fucking hate it! Freaking dragons. In the meantime, I find myself spending a lot of time replaying older games and trying out some indie ones as well. Here are some of the games I play. Risk of Rain and Terraria offer a lot of replayability, especially with mods, so I highly recommend you try them out, if you haven't already. Well, we've reached the end of the video. If you made it this far, consider subscribing to the channel as we're trying to hit 1000 subs and are missing just a couple more. Let me know in the comments below what games you'd recommend and if you're looking forward to some new releases.